The sexism at my corporate job is sucking my soul and literally making my hair fall out. And that's not even the worst part. This is OKOP, home of the craziest stories on earth. I'm Sam and Riley. What should OP do? Should they go nuclear? Should they burn down the whole office? Yeah. Uh, bomb threat, maybe. Burn it down. Burn it down. Make sure you got your hands on the insurance. Get the back. Get the insurance claim. Yeah, what would you do? Uh, same thing, dude. Great minds think alike. Are we telepathic? Oh, dude, I think we're having like a connection right here. We really are. We've been together all day today, and we we're have, like just we bouncing off We've been together other. basically like every day since a month ago. Dude, I love that. And it's my favorite. <laughs> I it's freaking love best. it. I love it. All right. By the way, we live together. So, <laughs> this is from Top O the Muffin, and they say, "I've been with my company working on a specific account for over two years." For the past year, I've been leading a small team of myself and one other employee who's working on said account. We have a third team member, but they didn't work out. So I've been work I've been doing the work of two people while supervising my coworker. Oh, that sounds like a drag, dude. It sounds like three jobs. Now, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not only am I doing my job, this guy that got fired's job, but I'm having to supervise this dimwit and dummy behind yeah, You wouldn't know how that's like, though, unless you do. You do what? have to supervise a few people. And we we do. I mean, that's part of running a biz, you, bro. You supervise any dimwits? Riley, how do I tell you this? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Riley, the what? smartest whip in the game. <laughs> it wouldn't be here if he wasn't a yeah, wicked we smart. Really, we really don't tolerate that. You dimwit? Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Um, and Riley's about to make an HR complaint on me right now for calling him a dimwit, implying that he's a dimwit, which I would, you know what? I would never actually do because Riley is literally the best. Aww. We love him dearly. He needed joking. If John was here, he would say, I also love Riley. Not anyway, <laughs> recently we learned, I love Riley. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Maybe puppet John. <laughs> Yo, uh. I should get sock puppets of you guys. Oh, dude. That would be so funny. If anyone has a sock puppet dealer, please we should get a P.O. box. If someone if someone could make a sock puppet oh. of John, we will use it in the show. We really would. And Sam. Yeah. I'll be, and Riley. <laughs> I'm afraid what you do with my sock puppet. Dirty, dirty it's pig. It's a crusty puppet. <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. Oh, my God. All right. Anyway. But anyway. <laughs> recently, we learned that our company would no longer be handling this account. My boss took me aside a couple weeks ago and told me verbatim that since this account was going away, he was giving me the choice to choose between two other accounts to work on because I am a senior employee and he appreciates all the hard work I put in over the past year. So he wants to give me the first choice. I've heard accounts way too many times. This is too corporate for my taste. <laughs> my account, 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 account. It's important to mention that one of the accounts... Jesus Christ, too many accounts. He was letting me choose to work on is our company's largest business. Ooh. So it's a big opportunity that would include some fun travel. Oh, nice. I wonder how many like millions into this account. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be a millions of the account. You know, it could be any kind of account. Accounts are different, you know? And the one thing you can account on is them all being different. <laughs> Come on, that was so funny. <laughs> He told me to take spring break week to think about it and let me know when I return which one I'd like to work on. Obviously, I knew I was going to choose the larger account because I had previous experience working on it and I wanted the opportunity to advance. So today I get into the office and I meet with my boss to give him my decision. And before I could speak, he informs me that he has given the large account to my male coworker, the one that I was supervising. Is this misogyny? Yo, they probably went on like some like business trip or like business like golf thing. Yeah, dude. It was like, you know. He would give it to you instead. OOP was the one that was supervising. I imagine it's a she, right? Yeah. She was the one that was supervising him and he gets the job? That doesn't make any sense. And he is giving me the leftover account to work on. He also informed me my male coworker would be traveling to cover an event that was previously talked about me attending. I was given no reason and my boss acted like everything was good and almost like he was delivering me happy news. I was so shocked that I just froze and didn't push back. Now, I am pretty self-aware and I'm always working on improving. I am the first to admit if I did something wrong that warrants losing this opportunity. However, the more I think about it, the more confused I am. I led my team through a really hard time and we did so well. I've never missed a deadline. I worked so hard. 
My boss even gave me an award a few months ago. I also know it's not about my work because he recently presented something I did to the whole company because he liked it so much. On the other hand, my male coworker is a really nice guy, but he does the bare minimum and needs a lot of handholding. Oh my gosh. When I've asked him for help in the past, he needed so much handholding that I basically ended up doing the work I asked him to help me with. Honestly, at this point, I'm like, let him fail. Yeah. You know, if you're having to do all the work, He's gonna fail at this big account, and then you're gonna then you're gonna get the promotion. So just let it let it be. Like but then let, you have to like clean it up afterwards. No, well, then just let him expose himself, you know. Yeah, and then That's she'll probably point. get the promotion. What time will tell? Yeah, exactly. Last week when I was out on vacation, he texted me every day asking me to send him files or ask questions he could have figured out on his own. I stepped up a million times to help take on last minute projects because he gets easily stressed and cannot multitask. Whoa. Dude, what? Don't, why are you doing his <laughs> job? OP, just stop. Just stop doing it. Those are the lamest excuses ever. Like, I, I get stressed and I cannot multitask. You mean you can't do your job? Can't handle responsibility and execute? So I'm not using this as an excuse to blame me being a bad worker on gender inequality. This is really the first time this has happened to me and it sucks. It feels out of my control. It just doesn't add up at all. How do I address this going forward? I doubt my boss would give me an honest answer if I asked him about it, yet this is souring me big time on the company. I feel very used. And in edit, I'm a mother and can't attend all the after work social hours while my male coworker does. He's schmoozing. He's schmoozing. My boss and coworker are also buddies and have hung out outside of work. Also, I have to work from home occasionally because I'm a mom and my kid gets sick. He's a single dude with no kids, so he's in office rain or shine. Is that it? Is it me? So we have a big update, but really quick, really quick. So far, yeah. what do you think OP should do? And do you think this is a case of misogyny or do you think this is a case of like something else? I don't know. It's definitely not like her work ethic or like her no. work ability because- Honestly, she's doing his work. She's doing three jobs, supervising this guy. Yeah, yeah, she's doing it all. It's nothing she's doing. Even if she made an excuse of something she can improve on, like she sees that and that's a quality in itself. Mm -hmm. um, if there's Riley an HR, has that quality. <laughs> thank you. Riley's great. It, we, this is the Riley appreciation episode. <laughs> Riley's just, look, look at that. Look at that, look at that smile. Dude, I, Come on. How can you turn down that how smile? Can make, we'll make, how can you not promote that smile? Can't stop. Can't stop smiling. Anyway, I got, let's make the next story of Sam appreciation <laughs> one. But if there's HR, like absolutely go to them and see like about the steps you can do. And it's tricky because it is your boss, and you yeah. want to be on good terms with your boss. And there really isn't like anything like there's not like a like a, a smoking gun that OP can point to and say like yeah. this was like had misogyny within its intent. I don't think it's also it, it may it may not necessarily be like misogyny it, it might be more that he's just a better schmoozer he just schmo yeah, schmoozed his way he's definitely been schmoozing he's been schmoozing right yeah. she could schmooze she could schmooze but like she has a kid to take care she, of she has a kid to she take care of mom. exactly exactly like so she has her own plate and it's definitely not fair but like i feel like office politics are a unfortunate part yeah. of the workplace you know it's yeah. just like that and that's just how it is it's people don't get promoted because they are better workers. They get promoted because they know how to play the game, yeah. which is why I hated corporate work stuff. I mean, I never really had a corporate job, but if you weren't such a wholesome person, you would do really good at it. No, if, dude, if the schmoozing part was a part of it, you would know I'm terrible at schmoozing. Really? Yeah. Well, for things I'm not, that I don't care about. I just oh, like, I'm so I'm very bad at it. Yeah. I'm very bad at it. John is really good. John can work his work his way in. Uh, a corporate setting. Whenever we dealt with corporate clients in like the early days, he was always the one that was like the person. I swear, guys, this is the best duo you can ever find. It's <laughs> it, they are insane the way they work together and bounce off each other. Dude, John is the best at that. He's so good. He's so good. If one, anyway, yeah. now it's gonna turn into the John, John appreciation hour. Yeah. But to answer Opie's question, is that it? Is it me? I think it's probably. It, I mean, it definitely is that he's schmoozing probably yeah. better than you. He just has more face time with the boss, which is important for promotions. Unfortunately, it's not you. Like it's not, I don't think it's anything like necessarily that you're doing wrong. 
Um, I think it's, and, and it could very well be a little bit of misogyny yeah. too, but I think the main thing is he's just getting more FaceTime. Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, off the cuff, this is four days later and she met with her boss. What do you think is going to happen? What kind of, it looks like they may have talked like, what do you think's happened? Uh, all right. I think it's going to be misogyny or like some kind of nepotism or okay. not nepotism, but like, like I think the boss might ask OP to do the work of this guy that he's getting promoted. We've seen that before. Yeah. I feel, I feel like oh, that. And, and that's to that. That's point. messed up. But let's get into this update. So I just met with my boss and wanted to provide an update on how the situation was handled and what was said. I approached the conversation by reminding him of the meeting we had prior to my vacation, where he offered me the choice between two accounts and told me to take my week off to think about it and we would discuss when I returned. I expressed to him that I was caught off guard when I returned to find out the larger account that I was offered was given to coworker who is technically underneath me in seniority. I told him I was trying to gain clarity on the situation and understand why that choice was made so I could in good faith move forward and not harbor any uncomfortable feelings or to feel like I had done something to warrant this opportunity being taken away from me, essentially. Wow, what a mindset. Which, I mean, well positioned and well said. Yeah. Right away, he acted like he never remembers the conversation where he offered me the choice ever happening. Gaslighting, dude. I had a strong feeling he would try and say he didn't remember, but I did not back down and insisted that it indeed happened. I am no liar. He knows that. He then acted like him giving the account to also red flag. Red yeah. flag. Like that now it seems like, like, like the, pedaling. the fact that he's not owning up to even the conversation, I think means that there's something nefarious maybe going on. Something something bad at play. He then acted like him giving the account to the coworker wasn't that big of a deal. And he claims the reason he gave coworker the brand was because coworker has chosen to travel to the big event in May attached to this account. I asked him why Cowork was chosen for this opportunity. He got really flustered when I asked this. He fumbled his words and finally said, well, Cowork is experiencing covering live events. This was a ridiculous excuse. First and foremost, I also have experience covering live events. In fact, I have more experience than Cowork does when it comes to this area. After he said it, he immediately regretted it because I was deadpan. He then says, do you also have experience with live events? He knows the answer unless he's just ignored every conversation I've ever had with him. Even if he didn't remember, he can deduce this from my work history that was in my resume. But alas, I have talked about said experience a million times. He knows, but pretends he doesn't. So I just responded to his question with, yes, I have extensive experience. He replied, well, I didn't know that. He did know it. But let's just play devil's advocate and repent that he really does have amnesia and can't remember. Why would he not just ask around if anyone else has experience? It just feels like such a stupid answer. I asked him if Coworker wanted this brand. He said Coworker never asked for it, but was excited when he offered the travel opportunity. So that's what made him excited too about having the account. So my coworker doesn't even care to have the account. He just wants to travel. Oh my gosh. So the boss is giving it to him. He's like, oh, yeah, you want to travel? Here's something that'll help you travel. Not like the, ah. Not like you could do the work well. Either way, I was given a load of word salad in an attempt to placate me and keep me on the team. He kept telling me how amazing of an employee I am, how much he appreciates all my hard work, and reiterated over and over that I have done absolutely nothing wrong in the time I've been here. I asked about the social aspect and reiterated to him that can be hard for me, and he again insisted that the company cares more about the work you create than the social stuff. I mean, which is what he has to say. After I left the meeting, I learned that all of the men on our overall team are going to the event. I'm not pointing this out to imply sexism. Heaven forbid a woman does that and she gets harassed by a bunch of dudes on here. I'm pointing at it out because my boss is one of the three men on the team. So it's obvious this all boils down to him preferring to travel with another guy. I get it. I'm not trying to travel with a bunch of dudes either, but the fact that he thought it would be okay to remove an entire account he promised me solely because he prefers to travel with other men is a joke. Also, about 20 minutes after our meeting, I walked in on the coworker and boss having a private conversation in the hallway that seemed to end when I walked out. Maybe I'm being paranoid, but what do you all think of that? Mm. What do you think? 
Oh yeah, they're definitely talking about the yeah. conversation. If you can't tell by the tone I am writing this update with, I am done. Sure's response went better than I could have, but he, he, he could have just straight up told me a bunch of mean stuff or that I sucked, but it made me realize that I am not valued or even a consideration to this company at all. They have used me to handle an extremely difficult account, bled me dry, and now when said account no longer needs our help, they seem to no longer need mine either. Going forward, I will no longer be assisting my male coworker and I'm currently looking for new opportunities in a place that will appreciate my work ethic and my talents. I also know I made a lot of mistakes throughout this whole process and have learned a hard lesson. However, I will say these games in corporate are not okay or fair to everyone. I mean, it is, it's a corporate game, dude. Yeah. It's like climbing the corporate ladder is just all social games. And also dude, like I've learned climbing the corporate ladder is just about like, if you fuck up, just shifting blame to another person. I remember we worked with someone at one of the companies that just like would completely shift blame to other people to like not get in trouble. That's insane. Cause like the right thing to do is be like, I messed up. I'm going to fix it. That's the right thing to do, but it's about appear. It's all about appearances. Dude. Gosh, good thing. I'm not in the corporate world. Yeah, dude. Corporate world sucks. It's sad to think how many of these companies lose out on hardworking, loyal employees because they can't participate in silly little social games. I'm going to go and try not to let the rest of my day be ruined by anger. It's going to be difficult. Oh my gosh. Wish me luck and thanks for any helpful advice I received on here. I don't know how else to proceed from here other than just pound the pavement looking for jobs until I find something new and can get out of here. In the meantime, I will be doing the bare minimum and nothing more. So, um... And there is a relevant comment. So Holiday Doc 1995 says, OP, do you have any updates? And OP replies, ish. My boss knows I'm mad and is trying to placate me by now offering a different account that currently belongs to another coworker. And I'm like, it's like now that coworker is mad and it just creates a chain. Um, I suspect the other coworker has no idea said brand is being offered to someone else. And I know for a fact they would be very upset to find out. I'm trying to get out as fast as I can. Boss got himself into a big pickle and is trying to dig his way out. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is, this is tough. Yeah, dude. I mean, it's just like, I, I think that's, that's what happens when you work at a big corporate job. It's just, I feel like you just don't, it's, it's just all social games. Do you think it's still a hint, hints of misogyny in this? I mean, I think it seems like with the boss just wanting to travel with dudes, that's probably that's not how you should base business decisions. But I think, yes, probably that's at play. But I think the thing that is more at play is the fact that like she, she, she's not like, as she said, she's not able to play those little like social games because she's just not there at the office all the time. Yeah. And so um, it's an unfortunate part of that world. But I think, I think it's more because of that. Yeah, I think it's de definitely at play, but I think it's it's all like more because of that, too. But maybe, you know, even if she was playing, actually, even if she was playing the social games, the boss gave it to the other guy because he wanted to travel with dudes, it seems like. Yeah, so then that's pretty misogynistic. I don't know. I would love to know what you guys think. Where, yeah. What do you think? Is it more the social games or do you think it's the misogyny? Um, let us know in the comments below. But there is an update. So, yeah. OK. Yeah. So this is nine months later. Um, and this is pretty recent on December 26, 2023. So I know it's been quite a long time since my last post, but I wanted to provide a few updates because a few people have asked. After I confronted my boss about my coworker receiving an account I was promised, my boss, my boss gave me two different accounts. Later found out one of the accounts was taken from a coworker without her knowing until the day I took it over. At first things were good and I was enjoying the change. It didn't last long and issues began to arise again. My boss became extremely micromanaging over everything I did. He partnered me with a copywriter that he, my boss, doesn't get along with, so they were constantly fighting and I was in the middle having to mediate and pass messages along between two grown men because they refused to speak to no, each other. Oh, being the middleman's the worst. Oh. I was absolutely dumped on with work, and when I expressed I was drowning, my boss would blame it on my copywriting partner that he hates for some reason and start yelling at him, which caused so many issues, so I just stopped telling my boss when I was overworked. Time out. Do you see where this is going? It feels like he's just creating an environment for her to leave. Yeah, I, yeah but I see you in the comments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell us if you see the same thing. 
The workload got so bad, it was at a point where I was being messaged asking me to make work changes while I was out sick with COVID. Reason for the changes was because people higher up dropped the ball, yet I was being held responsible. I stopped responding when I was sick, which caused issues. Anytime I was off work, I was being contacted by work, either about work or to do work. I had no home life. I was coming home and crashing every night. She's a mom too. Uh. Yeah, dude. So bad. So bad. Probably not a surprise, but this led to major burnout. And one day I started having extreme panic attacks when I would go into work. It got so bad. One day I called in and went to my doctor and cried and told her I can't do it anymore. I was so broken. She signed me off for six weeks medical leave. I told my boss about going on leave, did not tell him why, other than I was having a medical issue. And he lost his mind, told me I was blindsiding him with my medical leave. He told me he was going to hire someone to replace me while I was gone for six weeks, lol, and told me, I hope you get the help you need. Despite me not disclosing this was for mental health, which I feel like that this might be illegal. What is he saying? Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. Even in the corporate real world. Yeah. Yeah. He that, especially in the corporate world, yeah. especially because there's like a lot of protections that are built for employees there. He then told my coworkers I was going on leave before I had a chance to, which pissed them off because then they felt blindsided. He's over stirring the pot. To, oh, stirring the pot. Yep. So I took the leave because I was too burned out to care about my company's reaction. I was so broken for the first two weeks. It didn't help that my old male coworker who got the account I was promised before was messaging me on my medical leave, asking work questions. Please tell me you didn't respond, OP. Questions about an account we don't even work on anymore. I never responded. Good. I have been off now for four weeks so far, and during this time off, I've made so much progress with my physical and mental health. I began exercising. I've lost 13 pounds, most from not eating due to stress. I started new medication and even have been working more with my therapist and started seeing a psych nurse practitioner who is helping treat my ADHD symptoms that caused me a lot of stress. It's been great and I feel like a new person. Oh, and my hair stopped falling out since I've been on leave. So I know now that was due to stress. Your hair was falling out? You gotta be able to find out. This is not a good place to yeah. be. This is yeah. bad. Yeah, not only is the work terrible, but the I mean, the social toll. environment is terrible too. Everything's taking a toll. But now I have to go back in two weeks and I'm already panicking about it. My psych NP thinks it's too soon, but since she's not the original doctor who filled out my paperwork, my GP did, I don't know if she would be able to fill out the papers that are required to extend my leave. I'm scared to ask my general practitioner to extend because then she will have to fill out another huge packet from my company and she's a busy doctor. I mean, that's her job though. So like, I think you should ask that. My psych NP, I guess that's nurse practitioner, said if I do go back, she wants me working from home three days a week and only in office too. See, on top of all the stuff I've had to endure at work, I also have really bad ADHD, sensory processing disorder, and suspected autism all of which has been untreated until now. While my new medication is beginning to work, the environment in which I work is adding to my overwhelm on top of the toxicity I'm experiencing from my boss. There's a huge long accommodation process that I have to go through at work and that can take months. I use this time off to look for a new job, which freaking amazing, OP. I've been too burned out to even consider looking at other jobs while I was working, but since I've been on leave at the end of the year, not many companies are hiring and I haven't had any success in locating out something else during the break. So that's where I'm at currently. It's such a mess. This company has destroyed my mental and physical health, but now I'm stuck. I'm a single mom. My ex-husband doesn't work, so I'm responsible for my son's insurance and the majority of his expenses. So I can't just quit my job without anything lined up. But at the same time, I'm terrified of the mental and physical repercussions of me returning. I know my health is more important than any job, but when you are a slave to wages, I don't have much in savings, you don't have a choice. I wish I had a happier update but maybe someone else can learn from my mistakes. I was too accommodating and put too much of my energy into this job thanks to my ADHD tendencies of going all in on everything I do. And I was taken advantage of and ran ragged. And when I asked for help, I was dismissed. So that's it. 
If anyone has any advice for me on what I should do now, please feel free to spam me with whatever you have. I'm so desperate at this point to not go back. If you made it this far, thank you for reading along and following along with this mess. Hopefully within the next few months, I'll have a more positive update. Oh, that sucks. This is pretty, this is bad. This is bad, dude. I mean, I, I would love to know in the comments, like anyone who's been in corporate and has left a corporate job for maybe a better corporate job or something else, I would love to know how you did it. I mean, for me, I had like one job in an office. Oh yeah? Yeah, but it was interviewing stars in like Word. an entrepreneurial uh, setting. Like I was like basically like, interviewing people that had businesses in like the adult film industry. Huh. Um, it was really interesting. It was pretty cool. It was like Guy Raz, how I built this, but for uh, stars and stuff. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but like that was the only real job that I have and every interaction <laughs> I've had with like... <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't even feel like a real it wasn't it, it wasn't it wasn't i got it because i interviewed the founder for another pod like a podcast that i had called finding founders um but yeah i mean like my and my all my interactions like working in a like for like I, i've like contracted out for like a couple corporate clients okay and all of it has just been awful like i've hated yeah. it yeah it sucks i, I did mean, yeah i did one corporate internship it was with del carnegie yeah and the people were there were nice because they have to be nice, but yeah, just like I was in the brand cubicle. of how to win friends and influence people. Yeah. yeah, they have they have to be nice to you. Uh, but like sitting in that cubicle, man, does things to you. It opens I, your I mind. mean, it breaks your spirit. It really does. I think and like the, a lot of corporate America is built to break spirits and just put you in a box and make you a cock. Yeah, and like it's. It's already not the best experience in general, but to have like all of this mess going on as well makes it unbearable. Yeah. But yeah, I, I would love to know, like for people who have worked in corporate and maybe gotten into better corporate situations, like how did you do it? Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Let us know. We don't know anything about that. Yeah. Also, if you want to listen to my interview, look up An Unconventional Life with Alex Links and Samuel Donner. It's a pretty cool interview. YouTube? Uh, I think it's on podcasts. Podcasts. Yeah. Nice. Man. Man, I feel a little empty right now. Yeah, dude. I feel bad for OP. Yeah. Yeah. But I, just in general, I but feel But just empty. lucky. Hey, we, you have me though. Yeah. Do you have something for me? I have love to give you always. And? And a hug. Come over here. No, and what else? You, I'm trying to work in a segue. <laughs> this is the second one I've recorded second on hug. here. This is so... Oh. Yeah, those boobies. All right. Whoa, where's HR? <laughs> I need HR. They told me if I ever needed like to do an HR report, I have to write a Reddit story about it. Oh, it'd be so and funny. And then they read it yeah, on Yeah, report podcast. it to the community. Yeah. Dude, yo, they could be my HR. Dude, yeah, cancel us. The internet is your actually, HR. Actually, I might actually do like go on our subreddit and be like, please do not. <laughs> what? Sam, touch my boobies during a recording. I did. Call him I did. in 4K. I did. Yeah, yeah, and I have <laughs> proof. <laughs> I might do that. Yeah. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. <laughs> Here I am just showing my love by squeezing your boobies, and this is how you repay me. Yep, with an HR report through Reddit. I don't have many options, man. These options just left me. All right. Well, let's go into another. Is this going to be nicer? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I quit my job because they gave me extra work. Am I the a-hole? This is OKOP, home of the craziest stories on earth. I'm Sam and Riley. Is OP the a-hole? I think you need to step up and do more work. You know, more work equals more money. So yeah, you're the a-hole. You hate money. You hate providing. You hate doing fun stuff. Well, that's harsh. <laughs> yeah. Always chase the bag. If you're not chasing the bag. If you're not you're chasing the bag, bag, what are you chasing? Exactly. Well, uh, let's see what is the actual case. This comes from No Luck in Love For Real, FR. Uh, and they say, I've been a server at this restaurant basically since it started two years ago. I've given it my 110% and it wasn't enough. Dang. I was supposed to be a server only, but I was basically a manager without getting paid. I always covered when someone didn't show up. I even had days where I had to work as the only server slash bartender because they didn't have enough staff. Then he started hiring way too many people and I was consistently stuck with the worst shifts. That sucks. Actually, you know, I had a job at Nike as a shoe salesman. 
back in the day. I'll tell you about that later. I still made money, but come on, I was there when no one else was. Then everyone started quitting again. I was the only employee there that had been with them since the start before everyone else left. So it was me and a girl I had trained about a year ago. We were the oldest servers there, and there was a chef who's been with us for eight months, the only staff he managed to constantly keep. The boss came in furious and started berating us like he was doing us a favor keeping the place open, and we had to kiss his feet because of it. He started by thanking us for being with him for the longest to saying we were shit at our job. Then he promoted a new server who to that day, a couple of minutes before he came in, was asking me how to make some drinks and needed help closing a tab. That was the last straw. I just stood up and quit. I can't believe it. And there is an update, but there are also some relevant comments. But uh, Riley, if someone was promoted over you for... In this case, would you quit? Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, they don't value me and my work ethic. So they don't value my work ethic. And I take that personally. So I would leave. What about you? Would you stick it out for the end of the shift? Not be an a-hole? I don't know. I don't. Um, Low-key, I probably would stick it out to the end of the shift. But I'd probably be like, I'm done. Yeah. I, I mean. In respect to the other servers and workers. Yeah, I would stick it out to the end of the shift. But I think OP was like just so tired of being berated. Yeah. Makes sense. Anyway, relevant comment. So either boss is under extreme distress and projecting it out on you guys or boss is really bad at their job. And OP responds, he's just a rich dude who's never there. It probably hurt his ego that 90% of his staff quit in the last three weeks. 90%. That's crazy. It's the only explanation I can think of. But think, but thank you. I do hope what comes next is better. And then um, uh, someone asked, is this new manager related to the owner or something? And then uh, this is in reference to the person who was just promoted. And then OP says, yeah, she is friends with the owner. We all suspect they may have had some more going on, though. Ooh. Yikes. Friends with coupons. <laughs> friends with promotions? Mm. Friends, friends with promotional benefits. Did you get the money you're owed from working? Nope. That's the only thing I'm worried about. They pay every week on Wednesday. Tips are mostly in credit cards. So they pay that out and the hourly wage in check. So right now, only thing I can do is wait for Wednesday. What are they doing without you? Yes, they are closed for this week, or at least until they manage to get more people with experience. Turns out they were counting on me to train the new servers because their new supervisor doesn't know anything about how the restaurant works. Also, the other two people who were there with me quit today. Yo. Yeah. At the very least, I get the satisfaction that he had to close for a few days after I left. I know he must be livid right now because of it. So at least I get that since I know he's not going to change. Mm. And there is an update. That's crazy. She's got yeah. a little army with him. I mean, OP is literally holding the whole operation together. Yeah. You can't treat people like that. If, you, no. if they're an integral part of your team. I mean, I don't think the owner even knew. Yeah. Um, was there a time that you felt not valued in a job? Oh, yeah, 100%. That's why I'm working with you guys. Oh. <laughs> like when? I felt pretty valued at the sawmill. Sometimes whenever I would give ideas to the, uh, to the gun company slash that door company I would work for, they didn't hear that or they tried to make it their idea. And it just like I didn't really feel like I had a place, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, it, like the ideas, it, it was never like, oh, like Riley came to us with this really cool thing. It was more like, that's a good idea. And let me just take it for my own and brush this punk kid to the side. Yeah. It's yeah, hard it's working fine. with family and friends, but I've always worked with family and friends, but this has been a really good situation. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just finding the right people. Yeah. You know? What about you? Why don't you quit interviewing porn stars? Uh, that company went under. Yeah. Wow. It was so fun though. I had a great time. Yeah. It was it was like it was really educational. I felt like I learned to tell stories really well. Oh nice. Because like it was like I mean, like these people are entrepreneurs. It's yeah. just like they're doing it in an unconventional way, you know? Dude, this man thinks out of the box. This really I see the root of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. It was fun. That's crazy. And then right after that, I think I just started to do things on my own and just get clients. Heck yeah. Uh, never looked back. Never looked back. Look never at him now. Back. And here I am. Still not looking back. Still looking back. Just looking straight into your eyes. Aw.
I'm looking <laughs> right at your eyes. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, 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 like, like, Riley's like, just behind the bit. camera, and I just go, boop. Yeah, we do this a little bit late. So here's the update. I made a post last week about quitting mid-shift. It turns out shit hit the fan, so I thought I'll update you guys. So I walked out after he berated me and my two coworkers, who were the only people that knew what they were doing. After I walked out, the other server I had trained quit after their after her shift was over. That left th- that left them with their new supervisor who didn't know shit and is rude to customers and her friend who had started that same day. So they both don't know anything. They decided to close for a few weeks since they now didn't have servers or anyone to train them. I was the one who trained 95% of the servers that worked there. Most of them, it was their first job and when they left my hands, they found better jobs. So I'm proud of that. Come Wednesday when I'm supposed to pick up my check. They were closed, so I called them. Didn't pick up the first three times. Sent a text. They didn't reply until late at night that we should come to the restaurant. On Thursday, he told us that there was money missing from last week, and he wouldn't pay us until he knew what happened to the money and threatened to go to the police. We said he should check the security cameras, and we didn't take anything. Still, he didn't want to pay us and told us to wait till Friday. So we did. This is sketchy, though. Yeah. Friday, he made us wait at the office for an hour before telling us to come to the restaurant because he was there. We went to the restaurant where he was talking to his new staff. There, he berated us again in front of his new staff, saying we didn't manage to close him down because he already had new employees. I said, seems to me like you are closed, but okay. Savage. He was mad and talked shit for a while before giving us our checks and threatening to sue because we closed him down for a few weeks. The irony. What are you going to, you're going to sue to like, I don't know, possibly college kids or yeah. how old is OP? Uh, she did not say, or he or they, yeah. I don't know. I'm not assuming anything right now. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's, I mean, this is like a rich dude trying to sue servers. Like, yeah. come on. Like, who are you coming after? As of now, he still hasn't done anything, but I guess I'll update if something does happen. I already contacted a lawyer just in case all of this keeps going to shit. And then relevant comments. If OP said anything, I wanted to say a lot of things, but just standing there and looking like I didn't care made him matter. He just kept raising his voice and I just smiled, enjoying the distress. He's just making empty threats. I think someone's saying basically to the law stuff. Yeah, that's what I think too. I'm sure he wouldn't do anything. If he wants it to get ugly, I know a lot of shit about that place. So I'm going, so if I'm going down, he's going with me. Savage. No way the new people are going to last long, right? I could see it in their faces. They weren't going to last long. The manager just hit in the kitchen. The new employees were there speechless. I was listening and acting like I didn't care. And he was just about to explode. If they didn't quit after that, I wish them luck. And then someone else said, depending on your state, he legally could have been required to pay you in 24 hours and you could escalate this. OP responds, I already have my money. And if I can just forget about him and move on, I prefer to do that. He's a rich dude with a lot of influence around here, so I would prefer not to deal with him anymore, which I understand. Like, what a terrible working situation. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you got out of that. That, Yeah. Yeah, I've never had, like, a super terrible, terrible. I've, like, like, we've, like, I mean, John and I have worked with people that we just didn't like that much, but I feel like I've never had like a super bad job. I worked as a waiter for like a month in school. Yeah. Um, it was just mainly me. Okay. So I went there and they were like, guys don't work last long as servers. I'm like, whatever, I'll stick it out. Uh, and it got, it got bad. Like why? It, the first day I was a waiter, I was with another waitress. She was teaching me what to do and stuff. Yeah. She literally broke down in tears. It was because why? the first person we talked to was a freaking Karen right out the gate. Yeah. First table. And, um, and she was like going, she was like had some changes in hormones and like medical stuff or whatever. Uh, she said that was the reason why, but I was like, wow, this is, could not be more. It felt like coming introduction. Out of, yeah. It felt like a TV show. Um, and it just got worse from there. Like I uh, did all right. I'm not like when it comes to little, little details, I did not I feel like you that. would be, but you would be pretty good. You're pretty like personable. This is me at like 19 and I was still learning all the personable things, like, Yeah, which I still was, but. Now I kill, but then I yeah, was like, dude, you would get tipped. You yeah. get all of that tip, dude. I loved seeing the old ladies. Like, oh, dude, just charming. Yeah, them you up. could you could make the old ladies smile. Yeah, Smiley Riley. Yeah, um, I in Australia. So when I was studying abroad there, 
before I got a good job at Nike, which I loved, I was a shoe salesman. But before that, I um, was training. So, you know, those guys and girls that like stand outside of Whole Foods or like grocery stores and be like, yeah, you have a moment to donate, you know, a dollar to a child in need. Oh, yeah. You know, those people. Yeah. So I was applying to be one of those people. And it's weird because you get paid for every donation, like recurring donation that you bring in. So like, 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 and these guys, I remember like the, the, the meeting was like, you know how I got this Rolex by helping the, the children in Africa with a belly full of rice. If you, you know, like it's like, it was like, just because we're working in charity doesn't mean we can't get fat stacks. And I'm like, looking like this is That's not horrible. the place that I want to be. But we, I remember I, I had my first post outside of this grocery store and it was like an eight hour day and I'm sitting like, Hey, do you have a moment? Uh, do you, do you have a moment? And just everyone's just walking by you, not wanting to look at you. And I was with this other person who was like a more senior person. And that day I did not make a single sale, like nothing, nothing at all. And what'd they make? They didn't make anything either. They didn't make anything. And the thing is, you weren't paid by the hour. You were paid only on commission. And so I made nothing that day. And I'm like, this sucks. That's horrible. It sucks. It was the worst job. And so, but luckily, at the when I was applying and doing the training, there was this girl I met and we kind of hit it off. And she was like, hey, I actually have a job at Nike. Maybe I could get you an interview. And I'm like, that sounds so much better. And so she talked to her boss and got me the job at Nike. And we're at Christina. She's great. Christina. Um, oh, that one? No, not that one. No, oh. different Christina. Um, Australian Christina. Australian Christina. But yeah, she got me a job at Nike and it was so much fun. Dude. And I got like my Nike shoes and I was all decked out in Nike gear. It's pretty fun. Imagine us working at like somewhere like that. It was, dude, it was great. It was great. It, it was a vibe because like you get to talk to people yeah. and you get to talk to your coworkers and you're just kind of like vibing out. Like That is such like, a vibe. Like working that retail job was like pretty fun. I enjoyed wow. it. And I didn't really have many, I didn't, I don't think I had a bad experience. Like there was one French guy that was like adamant that he was uh, a different size than he was. And he was like, no, I know my size. Don't tell me what my size is. And I'm like, all right, dude. Um, <laughs> but like that, like it was like only a marginally annoying case. So like it wasn't really bad at all. Um, and some spice, you know. Yeah, just some spice. Like I, I, but I didn't really have that many. Maybe it was because of Australia, but I didn't have that many bad interactions. How long were you there for? I was there for like four months, maybe. Wow. Or five months. Huh. Yeah, and then I left. Yeah. Dude, that's awesome. It was fun. It was fun. I had a good time. It was a good time. I'd love to meet you, as a, like finding some shoes. If we would have met that way. Do you want to see my Australian job application? You have it. Yeah. Where do you have like here? If you, uh, I have a vid I made a video of it, go to, go to, uh, that same YouTube channel, look up Sammy, a duck died. So I've been in Melbourne the past couple of weeks and I've been trying to find a job. So I've been scouring the internet for anything related to engineering or marketing. Um, and I found this little company called Meltwater and they had an open position for a media sales intern. Is that right? Um, yeah. So I'm going through this application as I've done like a thousand times and I attach my cover letter, my resume. Wow. So this is a resume? Yeah. I fill out all the relevant information and I get to this little part that says submit a 30 or 60 second video. So at first I'm like, easy. And so I started with something like this. I'd like to join Melt. I would front of me. I would like to join Meltwater. I would like to join Meltwater. And then I'm like, you know what? That's not good. Go big or go home. So six and a half hours later, this was the result. Oh, hey, my name's Samuel Donner and I'm from Los Angeles and I'm currently studying at the <laughs> University of Melbourne for the next three and a half months. I would like to join the Meltwater team because you are at the forefront of media intelligence. I see the application of your company's technology in the marketing industry and I think you guys could really change the game. Also, positive reviews of past employees' work experiences paired with your core ideologies suggest that I would not only fit, but enjoy the company culture. I think I should be invited for an interview
because I'm uniquely positioned to marry engineering with creativity. As a mechanical engineer with a focus in computing, I've been trained to analyze data trends using Excel. As a content creator on YouTube, I understand how these data trends can be applied in the digital world to increase the impact, reach, and influence of my content. I've been told I was fun easy to work with. I love new experiences and meeting new people, and I'd love to meet the Bellwater team. Should have applied for like a video editing or something <laughs> like that. Like, if I was like, work, this is for Nike. This is for no. This is for Meltwater, and this is another a job application that I did. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. And they didn't accept you. Hey, Donner Party! It's two fifteen in the morning. I just finished putting all my stuff in for the job application. Um, if you want to be updated on whether or not I get this job, make sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications below. Um, and I'll see you next week. Six and a half hours later. No. <laughs> didn't get the job but they saw that video like a year later and it was like hey if you still want to work with us <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> yeah dang that sucks yeah <laughs> but I didn't get it but hey maybe that kid has a future in making videos <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll see where he ends up one day oh man but with that if you love us make sure to subscribe we love you and, and see, see you tomorrow, tomorrow.